This is CHSR 97.9 FM here in Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada. This is Python's Paradise, your film and music show, and this is your host, Greg Gilbert, a.k.a. the Python Hyena. Folks, I have the wonderfully gifted and talented William Daniels on the phone with me today, along with his lovely wife, and uh, I gotta say, congratulations on having an enduring marriage, you two. Yes, that's true, particularly in show business. Absolutely, like uh, some of these people that are they're married one day and divorced the next. So mm-hmm. con- congratulations to the two of you. Oh, good, thank you. What keeps you two together? You you must uh, have a lot in common and. Uh, a lot of patience, because nobody will stay with me. <laughs> oh, I see. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, we, uh, well, first of all, we're in the same business. I call it show business, but it's, you know, theater, radio, television, film. Uh, we're both actors. We met at Northwestern University in the uh, theater department. Uh, we went together all through Northwestern, and then when we got, got to New York, we got married. And it's been priceless ever since. <laughs> well, our relationship is best described as being mutually respectful of each other and each other's uh, abilities. But well, I have to say, we've always had a lot of fights. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. You know, last month, I had the pleasure... I got. I got to say that you got five films celebrating anniversaries this year, and I you had. Do? Yeah, you got oh, five. <laughs> congratulations! And I, I, um, I had the pleasure of seeing one of them on the movie screen last month. I saw The Graduate. Uh-huh. I love the. Your son was in The Graduate. No, no, no. You were. Uh, I saw your film, oh, The Graduate. You saw me in The Graduate. Yes, of course. Yeah. Um, no, I. Uh, I had the pleasure you of seeing. Have seen it before then? Oh, I've seen it many times, but this was yeah. the first time I've seen it in a movie theater. Uh huh. Yeah, and okay. it, the the experience seeing something in a movie theater with an audience is different than watching it at home, because I always thought The Graduate was funny. But I never knew how funny it was until I saw it with an audience. Right. Yes. It is. It's very funny. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yes. And, of course, uh, I almost should have introduced you the same way you introduced Dustin Hoffman. I should have said, are you ready, feature attraction? <laughs> 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 and, of course, you played Dustin Hoffman's dad in the film, and... Uh, you got you got that nice piercing voice and uh yeah. oh oh dear <laughs> oh i loved you in the film you know and uh dustin hoffman of course is uh getting up there in his years as well but that was his first movie i mean did you ever think uh, from that first shot of him on the plane that he would be a two-time academy award winner and where he is now directing movies like the quartet i see no you don't uh, uh, know anything about that or you don't even i mean you you don't have any uh, insight into what their futures are going to be destin was uh, a young man that uh, mike nichols saw in an off-broadway uh, uh, play and uh, used him, um, much to the chagrin of Paramount Pictures, who want him to use uh, another famous actor. I won't go into that. But at any rate, uh, he hired uh, Dustin, and uh, and then he hired me for his uh, father, uh, although I was only about nine years older than he. <laughs> but that didn't matter, and Mike, Mike Nichols knew that. Mike was a joy to work with. A joy uh, because of his uh, talent and his sense of humor, which was very charming, very funny, and uh, it made everything on The Graduate, uh, as far as I was concerned, uh, very easy and very pleasurable. 
what an innovative filmmaker too. There's, I didn't hear you. I said, what an inter an innovative filmmaker. Some of the shots are fabulous. Mm -hmm. When you look at them now, they are, you know. Uh, and he, uh, uh, you know, he did everything with a sense of humor and with a lightness. Uh, there was no yelling. There was no pressure. Uh, he got uh, three weeks of uh, rehearsal before we started shooting, but he only took two weeks of it and finally said, listen, I'm acting like we're... Uh, Oh, uh, in New Haven going into New York. He said, take the next week off, I'll see you on the set. And that's the way we went. And he was easygoing and charming and talented. That's all I can say. He had a, had a great cinematographer with him. And, uh, and it came out uh, very well. Of course, nobody knew it would become an iconic film. You'd, nobody knows anything about that. I mean... When you're involved with the hits, and I've been involved with some, nobody is thinking about uh, the, they're doing something that's going to last, you know, like like The Graduate or the Gyp or Gypsy, which I worked on uh, with uh, Jerry Robbins and uh, things like that, you know. Yes, and uh, I'm going to say one of my favorite shots in the film is uh, during uh, the Sound of Silence being played by Simon Garfunkel, and Dustin dives into the pool, and he comes up onto the rap, but he ends up a, a nice smooth cut where he lands on Anne Bancroft. And then you hear your voice saying, Ben, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, yeah. you know... Uh, uh, Bonnie, Buck, Buck Henry had something to do with that, didn't he? Buck wrote the final screenplay. Uh, yeah. And Buck Henry, I worked with him on another show uh, uh, called Captain Nice, a uh, half-hour comedy. But uh, Buck is a very talented uh, and uh, a gifted uh, a comedy writer. And uh, we all had a ball on the show. It was the most pleasant experience. Yeah. One question I had about The Graduate that always kind of confused me is that... Um, I didn't hear that. Oh. Yeah, what is the question? Yeah, I, I, one thing that confused me about the movie was after Dustin Hoffman's character, Benjamin, is exposed and... Um, uh, every like Ann Bancroft and Murray Hamilton are against him. You see a shot during I, uh, one of the Simon and Garfunkel songs where he looks out the window and he sees William Daniels at the pool. And William Daniels looks up at him and he kind of turns away. And I'm under the impression that uh, the father knows what happened. But then you go to the next scene where Dustin is saying... He's going to go to the university to meet up with Elaine, and they're congratulating him on a possible marriage. And it's like, okay, they don't know about it. But no, they didn't. They didn't know about it. So we're left wondering what happened, like between the the uh, the two parental figures who were, of course, partners, business partners or law partners. I don't think so. They weren't partners. They're just friends. Oh, were they? Okay. Yeah, they were just friends. So they weren't law partners. Oh, I thought Murray Hamilton had said, uh, "How long have your par uh, father and I been partners?" or something like that. Oh, when really? He, I don't remember yeah. that line. Yeah, when he first uh, has that sit down with Dustin Hoffman. I don't remember that. How long mm -hmm. have your father and I been partners? That's interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe, maybe that, I missed that, the lineup. Missed but that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But they did not know about it, no, and they were all horrified when they found out. What? Funny. <laughs> the affair. Oh, between. yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any uh, memories of uh, Anne Bancroft? Oh, she's. Well, sure. Uh, Anne uh, came uh, actually from Broadway. She was the most. Uh, prominent uh, figure in the cast. Uh, she was a well-known leading lady in New York, and she came out to do that film. But uh, 
uh, at first. In fact, I thought this picture was going to be about Anne Bancroft. And then I, and, uh, and and there was this kid named Dustin Hoffman who nobody knew. And I didn't realize uh, the focus of the film was going to be on him until I heard the score, which Mike Nichols said, listen, there's this tall guy and there's this little guy, and they wrote this uh, song, and I, I think I'm going to get them to do the music, and he played Sounds of Silence. And I thought, this is for young people, oh. And then I looked again at Dustin, you know, because uh, he was going to be the star of this suddenly. So I had a misconception from the beginning, and... Uh, that, but that didn't matter. It was just something that I had perceived, and uh, and of course, it turned out to be uh, a picture that made Dustin a star. Absolutely, and he turned into a terrific character actor, going from amazing actor. Yeah, he's an amazing actor. Went on to do Midnight Cowboy right after oh, uh, the Graduate. Wonderful character. Yeah, and you know, Annie had been a Hollywood starlet. In the beginning, she was a beautiful little harlot, Hollywood starlet, and she hated it. She they, she talked differently and everything, and she threw that all over and went to New York and became this kind of Italian, uh, you know, rough speaking girl in a play with Henry Fonda. I think two for the seesaw. It changed her whole because she had a very Italian quality and uh, behavior, and so she went through a lot of different things. And then she married Mel Brooks, which was a very unusual yep. kind of you know combination. Worked perfectly, and mm -hmm. she went on. She was always wonderful. Absolutely, and of course, Catherine Ross playing Elaine. Another great casting choice in that it was film. Perfect. Yeah. Any uh, memories of her? Me? No. no. I, I you didn't, didn't work with her. Well, I, I, I worked with her no. in a play. Okay. A reading uh, not too long ago. I mean, only 10 years, 15 years, something. And in Santa Barbara. Lovely woman. A really lovely woman. Yes. Yeah, I love The Graduate, and uh, i got to ask, what what's your favorite scene in the movie? Mine? Yeah. In The Graduate. Because there's so many to pick from. What's that? In the water. In the water? The pool. The pool scene. Oh. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love the way the camera is aimed up at you, and uh, uh, the woman who... That was who, interesting, because... Yeah. I, uh... I listened to Michael and the cinematographer. The cinematographer was worried about what Michael uh, wanted to shoot. He wanted uh, he wanted um, me in the water and uh, uh, I mean Dustin in the water and me and and my wife uh, Elizabeth uh, uh, on 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 the uh, edge of the standing, looking down at uh, at Dustin and. Uh, the, uh, said, the the cinematographer said, "Well, I, how do I get a shot?" She, he said, "Put somebody in the water," which means they had to hire a guy with a a camera that works underwater, and then send him under so he could get a shot of uh, from David uh, from uh, 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 Dustin's point of view to his parents, uh, and that was a photographer in the water, under the water, in back of. Uh, of Dustin to get that shot, and it was a wonderful shot. And uh, Mike, uh, you know, he he had to persuade people. Uh, I remember the photographer saying, "Listen, I'm shooting up in the sun. You won't be able to see them." He said, "Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't you shoot it the way I want it? And if I'm wrong, we can come back and redo it." And of course, he wasn't wrong, and we didn't have to come back and do it. Uh, he got what he wanted. So mm -hmm. anyway. Yes, great he knew exactly movie. what he was doing all the way through. Well, the graduate celebrating its fiftieth anniversary. Oh my God, fifty! <laughs> I love the film, and it's you did two films that year that are celebrating fiftieth anniversary. You did two for the robe for Stanley Dorland. You got yes. to work with Audrey Hepburn. <laughs> 
Oh, yes, yes, Audrey, wonderful lady. Very, uh, uh, very polite, very warm, very uh, easy to work with. And, of course, she was working with Albert Finney, who had her laughing all the time. Yes. And, uh, uh, I'll give you a little story. They were sitting in back of the, uh, the uh, station wagon waiting to do a scene with me who was going to walk up to them and have this scene uh, that I was, I was driving the car. And anyway, I was going up and down, uh, rehearsing my lines, because I'd just started in the film, and immediately... As what happens often in films, you find is you're doing your big scene at the very first time you're on. So, uh, you know, it's never in sequence. So uh, I was called over by Albert Finney, and he said, Billy, and he kind of waved me over to the, to the uh, car. I had been walking up and down going, oh, oh my God, and said, Billy, and he waved his finger at me, and I came over, and he said, listen, uh, not to worry. She gets all the close-ups. <laughs> <laughs> and that, of course, broke the ice. That was the first words I'd had with him. He was marvelous. He was great at, uh, uh, you know, uh, making everybody feel at home, and, uh, and so was she. And it was a very pleasant experience. And for Bonnie and I, ma imagine a month in Paris uh, while we shot this. That was, that was fun, too. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, of course, uh, you have some other anniversaries as well, like uh, celebrating its 40th anniversary, Oh God, directed by Carl Reiner. And uh, you got to work with the greats like George Burns and John Denver, who unfortunately are no longer with us. Yes, yes. Yes, that was, uh, for me, that was a brief appearance in that show. Uh, I didn't have a big part, as I recall, but I did have a funny scene and uh, or two, and uh, uh, I, 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 some of them I didn't even work with. I didn't work with uh, George Burns on that picture, but I, I did with uh, Denver. Anyway, uh, it was a, it was a nice experience. Carl uh, is a pro and uh, kept things moving s uh, smoothly, and it was a pleasant experience. What was uh, John Denver like? Well, I didn't know him that well. I mean, uh, you know, I came in and did that and left. Uh, okay. I, I really didn't ever sit down and uh, have a nice chat with him or anything like that. Uh, uh, he looked to be a very nice man. Yeah. No, Oh God was a, a very, very funny movie. I uh, asked a mm -hmm. lot of questions. That <laughs> did you see the uh, president's analyst? Actually, I have not seen that one. That's a funny movie. Bill is very funny in that. Oh, tell tell me about that. It's just a funny movie, and and he's just very funny, and he's got car guns and guns all over the place, and he's just a he was so good at playing these conservative, uh, very conservative, <laughs> terrible men, and you know he's not at all like that. No, he couldn't, he couldn't be more left. And uh, it, but but he knows how to do those funny guys. He really is good at that. I will have to check that one out. Yeah, I do. Yes, yeah, it's, a, it's a nice picture. The, didn't you mention Blind Date? Yes, I did. Blind Date. So in the book, yeah, that was one of the funniest scenes I think <laughs> Bill's ever done, where he's this judge and he can't stand his son, hates his son, John Larrick. <laughs> John really, Larkin. just funny <laughs> scenes in that movie. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Oh, gee, Blind Date celebrating its 30th anniversary this year. Oh, boy. And it's one of the most underrated Blake Edwards movies. Wonderful oh. movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, and you played the judge. Of course, the backstory, of course, Bruce Willis gets set up on this blind date with Kim Basinger. And uh, she, and when she gets a little alcohol in her, she goes nuts. And of course, John Larroquette plays the obsessive ex-boyfriend. Oh, he's so good in that part. John Larroquette is hilarious, especially the scene where uh, Bruce Willis points the gun at him and orders him to dance. <laughs> yep. He does the moonwalk. But you play the judge, and uh, you know you're you're saying. You say, um, I'm going to be breaking the law for the first time in my career, but it is worth it. 
Very funny. Those are very funny scenes. One of the funniest moments for William Daniels for me in that film was where um, he first meets Kim Basinger, and he says to John Larroquette goes, well, what do you think? And William Daniels says, well, she wasn't at all what I, who I thought she would be. And he goes, what did you think she was going to be? And he goes, blind. Blind. <laughs> Oh, man, you, and you had to keep telling the dog to shut up because you didn't know oh. Bruce Willis was around, <laughs> crawling around the floors under a blanket. <laughs> oh, boy. That well, film. Is... He made a whole lot of very funny movies around that time. He did, and Blind Date is rarely appreciated, and I, I think it's so funny. I think it's rich with humor. And I, I thought William Daniels playing the judge was very, very funny in it. The movie itself, so underrated. You see John Larroquette crash that car about, about a dozen yeah. times. He was great. Tell me, uh, William, about your experiences in Blind Day. I can tell by your laughter you enjoyed it. Oh, yes. Yes. I, I love comedies anyway, uh, although they're the hardest things to uh, uh, do if successfully, you know. It's a uh, comedy is hard, as somebody uh, well known once said. Uh, straight drama is easy. Uh, so, anyway, that's not quite true, but uh, I remember somebody saying that. And in this case, uh, it turned out to be very well uh, uh, a success and so forth. And uh, That's one of the friendships that really lasted with John Larroquette. Mm -hmm. We saw him in New York last year. Yeah. Oh, yeah? yeah he's, they, he's never forgotten that. They, that's a, been a good friendship. I, I've always liked John, even in Night Court, you know, yeah, a very yeah. funny guy. Yeah. 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 Very good physical humor for a guy. He got, yeah. He's very stocky in his uh, size, you know. Yeah, big guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was it like working uh, for Blake Edwards? Oh, uh, let's see. Blake was an interesting guy. I worked with him too. He yeah. he was um, he wanted you to do that last play with uh, his wife, Julie, uh, in New York. I remember they wanted you to come and do that, um, but you didn't want to do a musical. You just didn't think you could, and she shouldn't have done it because it almost destroyed her voice. Yes. Um, You're talking about Julie Andrews. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because she's such a lovely lady. I know. And. Uh, but that, that that last musical really kind of ruined her voice, and mm -hmm. then she had an operation that did not turn out well. Yeah. It was a tragedy, really, a tragedy. Yeah. But Blake was a fascinating guy. Yeah. Well, yeah, and we got along very well. As a matter of fact, we went and played tennis up on that roof downtown in L.A. and everything. And, uh, and he had... He was a good friend. Didn't we? Yeah, we... We were over at their place for a, a dinner party outdoors. It was very pleasant. Blake was a wonderful guy, easy to work with. Yeah. I've been very fortunate with these directors, I have to tell you. Yeah. Any memories of Bruce Willis and Kim Basinger from Blind Date? No, I... Uh, I remember... Somebody, somebody asked me about uh, Bruce, and uh, I said... Uh, well, you know, he reminds me he's like a young Jimmy Cagney. Okay. I got back to him, and he came over and he thanked me for the, for the uh, uh, remark. And but he did. He, he did. He remind me of a Cagney. He's kind of rough-edged guy, uh, you know, but very nice. Easy. But then he went a whole different way. Yes, he yeah. did. I'm yeah. I'm he went convinced. A whole different way, but very. I'm <laughs> I'm convinced that since this since Blind Date came out the year before Die Hard, I'm yeah. convinced that John Larroquette uh, had to get him ready for all the the terrorist characters he'd be fighting. <laughs> <laughs> and Maybe. A, yeah, and celebrating its tenth anniversary this year, you, you were in Blades of Glory with uh, Will Ferrell and uh, John Hader. That's right. That very brief, you had a brief scene with them. Mm -hmm. I don't. Blades God, of I don't Glory. Even you, 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 you were the uh, the uh, 
judge or something of the uh, skaters. Wasn't that it? Yeah, you were judging the skaters. It was a very brief scene. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't remember too much about it. Yeah, I remember seeing that. You get a few other films I have to briefly ask you about, though. Um, you were in a, an Academy Award-winning film called A Thousand Clowns, of course, where Merton Balsam won the Oscar. Yes, yes. Uh, it was a play uh, uh, of Herb Gardner's wrote. Uh, Herb Gardner. Herb Gardner, yes. And uh, who became a good friend of ours, and... Uh, we did it on Broadway, and then we shot the film out on Long Island in Hempstead, I remember, and uh, it uh, turned out very well. Um, the only one who was missing in it was uh, Sandy. Sandy Dennis. Uh, uh, they wanted to change for some reason. I don't know why, because Sandy was marvelous in it. But then Barbara Howells was marvelous in it, so it didn't hurt the play or the picture at all. It all went very smoothly and uh, uh, quickly, and uh, Jason was wonderful. And uh, as I say, I've been very lucky in these pictures that I got involved with. <laughs> yep. And then you did, uh, of course, uh, uh, the one and only with Henry Winkler. <laughs> Oh, God, I don't remember that. Carl Reiner directed that. Oh, did he? Uh-huh. The one and only. With Henry. It didn't wasn't very successful. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think he was uh, uh, playing a wrestler. Yeah. <laughs> he hypnotized yeah. his opponents. Well, yeah. Uh, and you were in uh, All Night... No, we only met, no, got back up a bit. The Blue Lagoon. With Brooke the Blue Shields. Lagoon. Oh my God! We had to go to Fiji to do that, and we lived on board the boat and, and went ashore to have breakfast or lunch or whatever it was, and then got on this old schooner. And uh, I was in a fright wig. I looked like Einstein, uh, <laughs> who'd been scared to death, and hair was standing on end. Uh, that was the worst wig in the history yeah. of movies. Yeah, the director took me into a place and had a big bin of wigs and so we picked out a wig it was just terrible <laughs> and i look uh, you know like einstein frightened <laughs> anyway uh but uh, the picture went uh, well uh as far as i know and she was very young at the time and uh, uh there was a young boy who uh, i didn't have too much to do with them uh, being the captain on this on this ship Oh, boy. <laughs> Fiji. We go to Fiji to do it. Tell me, God. Uh, and, of course, you did All Night Long with the great Barbara Streisand and, of course, Gene Hackman. Yeah, he. you had a scene. I was in that, too. You had a scene with Gene and Hackman, Hackman and you said he embarrassed you or something. And then you were with <laughs> Diana. Diane Ladd, who's a very good friend of ours. Yeah. So uh, you worked with Diane Ladd and Jean. Mm -hmm. uh, he um, he kind of criticized my. Yeah, he, he didn't. You didn't get along too well with him. No, no. Oh, but Diane sorry. was a really good good old friend. She's yeah. been a friend for years. Right. She's wonderful, and I understand she just did something. I'm not sure what it was. Somebody told me she just did something that was wonderful. I don't know what it is. But. Actually, to think about it, I did just see her in something, and right in, now it, oh, it escapes me. And, uh, yeah, she was just in something. She played a, oh, yeah, it was Unforgettable with uh, Catherine Heigl. Okay. Yeah, I think that was what she was in. Well, I just heard. I haven't seen it, but I heard that she was wonderful in it. <laughs> yes. And, of course, uh you were also in Reds? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, Warren, who I'd worked with uh, before, uh, what the hell was it, Warren? I, I did. You did Parallax View. Oh, the Lord. Parallax View. And uh, he asked me to come over to London and do this uh, scene of uh, uh, an organizer talking to all the, the people 
there. That was a major uh, film. What? One that was a wonderful film. Yeah. I think that's probably Warren's very best work. Yes. Of everything. And he was, you know, he did it carefully and he even took time off to get the right seasons and all of that. Uh they they let him have a lot of leeway and he came up with a very good picture. Very good. Yeah. Yes. And of course her alibi with Tom Selleck. That was a fun, silly movie. Which? Her with alibi. Tom Selleck, and uh, where you were his agent. He was the writer, and you're his agent. Do you know, remember that you did that in Baltimore? I think made oh. that picture in Baltimore. God, it's a long time ago. <laughs> I can't remember some of these things. I know, but you you had worked with Tom before. You had done a pilot with Tom many, many years ago. Uh-huh. Because he was a guy who did pilots. Remember? Yeah. Yes. They could never find the right show for him. And they mean, finally Tom Selleck? Did, Tom Selleck. He, yeah. did, he did pilot after pilot after pilot after yeah, pilot. Yeah, they, they, they wanted to find something for him, and I don't they think finally, they ever did. Oh, no, Hawaii Five-0. Oh, yeah, Hawaii Five-0. Uh, anyway, as a matter of fact, we did that over. Uh, uh, the picture I was in with him was over in Hawaii, wasn't it? Was it? Was it? But that wasn't the one that... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. That's, the, uh, that's it. You had um, some good television work, of course, Boy Meets World and uh, Knight Rider. Anything mm. stand out that that uh, that you remember with the the most passion? Uh, excuse me. Say that again. Of your... could, there couldn't be much passion with Knight Rider. <laughs> he just did that in a studio. Yeah. You know, he never he never worked with David. No, we never worked together. Uh, I met him at the Christmas party, and he said, "I don't know. They put this together, and it seems to work, even though we never met each other." <laughs> but what Bill really loved doing was Saint Elsewhere. Saint Elsewhere, yeah. yes. That was the wonderful show. Boy he, Meets World is an enormously successful successful show, and he has. Millions of fans that just loved Mr. Feeney. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Out of, I, I here. This might be a hard question, but out of uh, all, I didn't hear that. Out of all the films you've done, do you have a personal favorite? Out of all the films that you've done, mm-hmm. which is your favorite? Well, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I never thought about that. But off the top of my head, I would have to say 1776, because I played it for two years on Broadway, and I came out and did it and uh, for Jack Warner. And uh, uh, it, it was a very long and uh, tough role. With nine musical numbers, and uh, and uh, I actually uh, that was the last thing I did on Broadway. I was so tired of doing eight a week for two years. <laughs> I moved out to L.A. Wow! I know my favorite of all the films, as a film, yeah, would be Two for the Road. Oh, with Audrey. Yes. Yeah. Well, that was wonderful. I mean... No, I thought it was a wonderfully done film. I thought yeah. when we read the script, he couldn't make any sense out of it. Yeah, cars going in, cars going out. And, but, and it was her best film, the best acting she ever did. And she was a wonderful lady. And uh, Albert is so fun. And I don't know, all the cars. Great picture. Yeah. About a marriage. How it was many... interesting. Yeah. I didn't know any of them. I just got this off of... And here I was in New York uh, to come to uh, Paris and, and be in a film with Audrey Hepburn and Albert Finney. I, uh, my agent said, you can't turn that down. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, and I didn't. And it was, uh, you know, and Bonnie came over with me for a while. And uh, it, was, uh, it was lovely uh, to be working there out on the road and those lovely uh, tree-lined roads around uh, Paris. And uh, it was all very pleasant. Again, I'm lucky in these pictures, to yeah. tell the truth. How many movies have you two done together? Oh. 
Movies? I'm, movies? We haven't done movies together. No. Television. Just, just oh, television. just television. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, because I uh, you mentioned two for the road. I I but I thought that maybe you guys have done a lot of pictures together. Talk yeah. about working together. Like I know you're you've been married all these years, and uh, mm-hmm. what's it like working together professionally? Well. Uh, I don't know. You want to answer that? Bob? Well, we usually we like it. Mm-hmm. It's very relaxing. It's very easy, and uh, you know, we just. I mean, after a while, you just pick up everything from the other person. You know, so you know them so well, and you've worked with them on stage since you were eighteen. You know what? I mean, it's just. Uh, it's fine. It's good, and uh, it's old home week. <laughs> it is old home week. Yes, it's just. The most natural thing in the world. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, you know what? This this has been such an honor. I I'm I was so happy to have uh, you two come on my show. Um, uh, first off, I got to thank a couple of people offhand. First, it was um, Sa- Sandy uh, Joseph who yeah, I contacted, Joseph. and she uh, got back to me and forwarded the, my message. To um, Sharon Elman, right. who your publicist, yes. And uh, Sharon, I, I got to say a nice special thanks to because she's worked really well with me to get this interview together, and I, I appreciate the trust and uh, and uh, putting this together. And um, I, I want to say a special thank you to both of those ladies for uh, <laughs> hooking this up. Yeah, they're good ladies. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, we, we're celebrating your career, William, and your marriage. Congratulations again. Okay. <laughs> and look at the number of anniversaries. I guess you didn't know all the anniversaries you were celebrating. That's a, a, <laughs> no, it's been a, 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 a long ridiculous. career. <laughs> a long career. <laughs> that's, a, about it. that's a lot of candles on the cake for, uh, like, The Graduate and Two for the Road and mm-hmm. Oh God and Blind Date. <laughs> <laughs> all those films celebrating anniversaries, and they all deserve to be seen. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they're good films. As I say, I've been fortunate that way to be in uh, these kinds of films that have worked out so well. And, of course, in this country, 1776 is played every year. Yeah. Yes. That's because of the 4th of July. Yes. Yeah, Fourth of July. You 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 guys celebrate yours three days after we celebrate ours. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, have you ever been to my neck of the woods? Like I live in New Brunswick, Canada, a little spot right next door to Nova Scotia. No, we've never been there. No, no. no. We've been to Toronto. We've worked a lot in Vancouver, mm-hmm. but yeah. uh, and I've worked in the middle of the country a little bit, but never. Never near Nova Scotia. Okay. Well, I'm we're right kind of next door to Nova Scotia. We're in New Brunswick. We're in the Maritimes. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you know what? This this has been a lot of fun, and I asked you both to be very patient on the release of this interview because it's I've got so many. You're, you're number one hundred and forty six that I've done. <laughs> oh my goodness. I've done almost 80 interviews, and we're not even done May this year. Oh, boy. Yeah. Um, but this is this has been great, and uh, this this has been such an honor um, talking. Well, did you mention the fact that Bill's written a m- memoir? Oh, I did not know this. Yeah. He, he He's written a memoir called There I Go Again, or How I Came to Be, Mr. Feeney, Dr. Craig, John Adams. And Kit, and many others. It's very good. I would advise you to try to get the interview out a little early if you can. Okay. When when would you like when would you like it out? When would you like that out? Well, that that any it's the book is out now, so they can get it at Barnes and Noble. They can get it at Amazon. Any bookstore, I think, would be able to get it for somebody. And it's really a terrific book. You know what? I'll do that. I'll do yeah. that. I'll get that out early. Okay. Um, what was it like, the process of writing that? It was hard. He worked on it for years. Wow. He really did. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then, it, then getting it published is hard. 
it's really hard to get it published. Mm-hmm. But uh, but do look it up because uh, yeah, I I I want everybody to read the book. It's really he's written a good book. It's really Bill too. He wrote it. Uh, the title is William Daniels, and then under the title, uh, the, some of the things that I've done. <clears throat> We will put this out early. Yes, we will. And uh, we'll get okay. that to you. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Now, the, okay. U- the YouTube release will be a little bit later, but uh, we'll give you the link when it airs here f- uh, first. So, uh, okay. But it would be good if you could advertise the book a little. Yes, we, we'll, we'll do that. Yes. Okay. We will do that. Now, um, before you go... Uh, could I get a plug for my show? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, just uh, s- state your names. And uh, my name, of course, is Greg Gilbert. My Greg show, yeah. Gilbert? Yeah, Greg Gilbert. Uh-huh. And my show is called Python's Paradise. Python, Python like the... Python's s- Paradise? Yep, that's my DJ name. And I'm from... Python's Paradise? That's right. Okay. And I'm from New Brunswick, Canada. Okay. Yeah. So you want Bill to do that now? Yeah, please and thank you. He's going to have to say it again, then. You'll have to say Okay. You're talking to Greg Gilbert. Hello, this is William Daniels. I've been talking to Greg Gilbert. Python's what? Paradise. Python's Paradise. Python's Paradise. New Brunswick, Canada. New Brunswick, Canada. Can you do it again now? <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. A little bit of humor there at the end. <laughs> Greg Gilbert, Python's Canada. Paradise, New Brunswick, Canada. Yay! How <laughs> oh, you do that, huh? Okay. <laughs> anyway, is that all right? That that's fine, you know, William. And uh, yeah, we'll promote your book, and and uh, I'll send this interview out a little earlier so that uh, you guys can um, have okay. it on hand. And when it comes out on YouTube, I'll send you that link as well. Okay, that would be okay, great. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. God bless both of you. And again, okay, you great. know, <laughs> it's it's been this has been an honor. Yeah. Well, oh, it, good. It was good talking to you. Absolutely. You two have a wonderful, blessed day. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye now.